Well, Jim, on that note, let's go to the next bit of audio. Dax Harwood jumping in. Are you going to get to me ever? Let's go to this. Like, that's another thing, too, is like, we never want to, we, we always want to, to, to remind people where we came from. Uh, because we, we've got to remember as wrestlers that these guys were working 300 days a year, 350 days a year, whatever. And I mean, that sounds impossible, but they were. And they were away from their families and they made a, 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 per, a small percentage of what we're making now. You know, and we're working less dates now and, and, and making more money than they were. And we have but, doctors at ringside. That yeah, come check on we have us. doctors. So we have, have we have catering. We have doctors. We have catering. We pay for a hotel. They pay for our transportation from to and from the the the, the, the airports. That, that never happened because those guys, you know, that, that never happened. But it happens now because of them. And so, yeah, if, uh, you know, I'm going to get some heat for saying this, but whatever. But yeah, if, if Cornette wants to, if he wants to shit on me, that's okay. You know, I'm okay with that because he's earned that right. If, if, if Bret Hart or Booker T or whoever says, I'm not a fan of those guys because they did this, that's okay. Cause they earned that right. You know what I mean? And I will listen to him and I'll say, well, maybe I can, uh, I, maybe I can take that and, and say, okay, maybe I can better myself. But I'll never get mad at them for not liking something because they earned that right. Because they were away from their family a lot longer than I'm away from my family now, you know, and they paved that road. And now I can make a living and work one day a week, two days a week, maybe three days a week and give my family a life that they may not could have afforded, you know, but it's because of the hard work they put in. And we as wrestlers have to remember that. Um, Sorry, that was a tangent for no reason. I apologize. <laughs> sorry, I just love I love wrestling. And sorry, but thank you, thank, thank you, you, FTR. And there you go, people who were fans of a given pursuit or profession, and took the time and it made the effort to learn to get into it, and respect it, and respect the people that came before that were. Honestly, in some cases, better than they are because they had the experience and they had the opportunities. And I've talked about the fact it's not FTR's fault that they're not over as far as ticket selling teams like the top teams in history because nobody is now. And it's not the talent's fault. It's the promotion and things that promoters have let be done to the business. And part of that is letting people in with the exact opposite outlook of this i'm not because he praised me i'm not saying that it's because he respects all of the previous generations and what they were able to accomplish and what they did under more challenging conditions than the guys find themselves in today in in a lot of cases and it's that difference somebody who respects and appreciates and gives effort to their profession and their business instead of jack offs that come in to think the whole thing's a reason to play with their friends. That's why FTR gets respect from the veterans and the people of previous generations. And, you know, these jolly jokers everywhere else do not, because it's a difference in the way they conduct themselves, both in the ring on television and outside of it. But... Because Dax... And by the way, Dax and their... their FTR is getting these ovations. And the fans love him. But because Dax made that comment, the AEW cosplay trampoline cowboy fans that like the flippy do stuff and think that I'm some kind of homophobic racist asshole because I don't like Twinkle Toes' Japanese fetish objects, they went ballistic on how dare he say something good about Jim Cor. I trended because he said something good about me. They still think I'm irrelevant, some of that crowd over there, but the ones who know, know. But now this has almost become a measuring stick. Can you make yourself so good and so professional and so accomplished that Cornette will say something good about you? But if he does, then the AEW fans will goddamn jump down somebody's throat because I'm not supposed to like anybody they like and the people they like are not supposed to like me. Guess what, motherfuckers? Some of the people that you like by accident, basically, actually know what they're doing. 
And those people that know what they're doing know that I know what I'm doing. So therefore, <laughs> get used to it, snowflakes. They all agree I don't know a goddamn thing. They all agree Brian <laughs> is clueless. That is something that's unanimous and doesn't need to be brought up again for another round of voting. But otherwise... <laughs> So that's, I, I have never seen anything like this in my life where that these nitwits just can't accept that some of the wrestlers, like I said, by accident that they like are actually accomplished professionals that think the same way that I do about their chosen profession. Well, these are the same fans that also can't accept that Kenny Omega and the Young Bucks have any bad qualities as human beings, but... That's Just a talk to a time. bunch of the people that interact with them. You'll hear about plenty. Jim, I have some more audio because you're mentioned again, but before we get there, you know, some of these fans may be really upset with Tony Khan for allowing Dax Harwood to sit there in front of or in back of the IWGP and the Ring of Honor and the or AAA even beside Tag titles. Of. Well, beside of Tony Khan, but in back of the belts. There's a lot going on. He allowed this to happen. He mentioned you. The fans may want to sue. God dang it, there is no way in the world that we're going to allow some of our favorite wrestlers to mention somebody that we don't like without suing. And if you need to sue, well, you know who that you should call, and I can't rhyme call with who or you, so play it. Call Steven P. Or two. Those are the rest. Ladies and gentlemen, the only answers to questions that you need to know are the followings. Who? New? Sue? If you want to know who that you need to knew in order to sue somebody. What? Well, it's the past tense, but it works. <laughs> then call. <laughs> Stephen P. New at newlawoffice.com, 888-692-8084. Boy, howdy, folks. Again, we have told you about the nearly $100 million that Stephen P. New and his minions there at the new law office over there in beautiful downtown Beckley, West Virginia. That's the home office. They have satellite offices in Sweden, France, Belgium, and Kokomo. But... Kokomo. Almost a hundred. Well, Kokomo is a bustling community these days. They got a stoplight put in last week. So, <laughs> despite that, ladies and gentlemen, over a hundred million, almost a hundred million dollars has been paid out to clients of NewLawOffice.com that have been wrong. They've been wrongfully terminated. Their health has been damaged by a corporation negligent in the disposal of its chemicals or harmful products. There's the opioid addicted babies and the various opioid crises and related crises coming from the uh, pharmaceutical companies trying to bankrupt the judgments against them for the opioid-addicted babies, and now Stephen P. News hopping on them for that. So he's going to get you coming or going. If you're coming, he's going to get you, and if you're going, he's going to get you, but one way or another, he's going to get you because if you have done something to somebody that Stephen P. New represents, boy, howdy, be looking over your shoulder. 888-692-8084, newlawoffice.com, a philanthropist and philanderer of the highest order, one no, of West Virginia's... No. <laughs> he's not a philanderer, certainly not of the highest order, so let's I not say that. I thought that was the past tense of philanthropy, philandering. No, that's not the past tense uh. of philanthropy. <laughs> well, nevertheless, if you need to sue or need representation in open court because of circumstances beyond your control and you need help, Stephen P. New is the man for you, the consigliere. If you need to sue, call Stephen P. New, get even with Stephen. You know all the the uh, the poems by now. He's a man that he'll he'll get the job done one way or the other. As 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 a lot of the guys used to say when they'd cut promos when they knew they were putting somebody over, a job needs to be done and I'm the man to do it. 
Well, that's Stephen P. New at newlawoffice.com. You know, before we move past the Dax answer, it reminded me, I just thought about it while you were talking about Stephen P. New. Remember, we had audio of Kenny Omega, or I think it was actually, was it audio or a quote? It was a quote that we read where he talked about how wrestlers are so afraid of the cult of Cornette that they yes, have to... Yes, yes, shaking in fear. That they have to please the cult of Cornette. There was Dax apologizing for the fact that he was going to say, Cornette, I listen to Cornette. I agree with him. Well, <laughs> maybe that's not exactly what he was saying, but you get the point. Well, that's because some people are grown up, well-adjusted, normal human beings, and some are fucking need their pussies powdered on occasion. <laughs> 